بسم اللہ اکمان رحیم اینڈ السلام علیکم پاکستان ویلکم بیک ٹو کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ وی آر ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ کنورجنس آف کارپوریٹ گورننس آن اے گلوبل لیول ٹوڈے وی گو ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ اے اسپیشلائزڈ ایریا اینڈ دیٹ از لا اینڈ ریگولیشن ناؤ وین وی لک ایٹ لا اینڈ ریگولیشن دین ڈیفینیٹلی ایوری کنٹری ہیز این اون لاز دیر آر ڈفرینٹ سسٹمس لائک دیر از دا کامن لا سسٹم اور دیر از دی امیرکن ماڈل اور دیر از دی یورپین ماڈل اور دیر از دی چائنیز ماڈل آف لا اینڈ جسٹس Uh, and therefore, in all of these different systems, uh, the implementation of law and the interpretation of law is done uh, in a different way. But today, we're going to look at uh, law and regulation in the context of corporate governance uh, and its convergence. Now, uh, what we see is that uh, La Porta basically focused on countries with dispersed and concentrated ownership, demonstrating differences in the legal protection of shareholders. In many countries, the only alternative appeared to maintain control through concentrated ownership. So, Uh, what we see is through La Porta's research is that uh, he was looking at different countries and how corporate governance was being practiced over there. And the first thing that he basically saw was uh, that there is, uh, there is dispersed and uh, or concentrated uh, ownership. Now, in many countries, what we see is, is that there was concentrated ownership and in the other there was dispersed ownership. But again, through the research, La Porta basically was demonstrating the differences in the legal protection of shareholders. Uh, in these different uh, models. Now, in, in many countries, the only alternative appeared to be a basically uh, control uh, through concentrated uh, ownership. So that again uh, has been a focus uh, of uh, the uh, large uh, shareholders and the large investors, but definitely that does compromise on the uh, medium and small shareholders. And therefore, uh, what uh, is being done through these uh, global corporate frameworks is to create more equitable uh, sharing uh, within that particular organization. So that is what we see now. Coffee also uh, then further extended La Porta's acceptance that in common law system, there is greater flexibility of response to new developments. The critical role of the decentralized character of common law institutions was to facilitate the rise of both private and semi-private self-regulatory bodies. So uh, again, what we see in the common law system, and for those who do not know what the common law system is, it is basically where else, wherever uh, United Kingdom uh, or England uh, basically ruled uh, or what we call the Commonwealth. So all of these Commonwealth countries or wherever there was the rule of the British, uh, they introduced their own uh, legal system, which is called the common, uh, common law uh, legal system. And it is uh, one of the largest in the world and one of the most common. In Pakistan also, uh, it is the common law system. In UK also, it is the common law system, definitely. So. Uh, what we see is, is that in the common law system, uh, there was a greater flexibility uh, of response to new development. So it was more absorptive, it was more flexible, it was more accommodating, uh, it, was more, uh, it was more flexible in the context uh, of assimilation and uh, of comprehension uh, of uh, do's and don'ts. Now another thing is, is that when we look at all of this, then uh, a very important uh, thing in uh, the decentralization Uh, of the common law institutions was uh, that again both facilitated private and semi-private self-regulation uh, bodies. So uh, in that we see uh, the emergence uh, of the um, board of directors and the board of directors basically uh, holding the audit committee and the human resource committee and through those committees basically ensuring that there was uh, centralization of implementation and they basically were only overseeing the policies and the strategies. Uh, and they were acting as regulatory bodies because it was like uh, a balance and check so that the different components of the organization or the different uh, top layers of the organization uh, would not sway and would not uh, deroute themselves, would not deviate uh, from the core objectives of the company. So uh, that is what we see uh, basically emerging. Now, Coffee also concluded that it was uh, market institutions that demanded legal protection rather than the other way around. So what we see is that The market institutions basically wanted legal protection so that and there could be lesser exploitation and lesser manipulation. And strong markets require uh, strong mandatory rules as a precondition. So again, as a conclusion, what Coffee came up with was that to have basically strong markets, it's, it's mandatory to have uh, rules as a precondition and those rules which are uh, implemented on merit and on equitable basis. So that uh, again is extremely important. Now, what we see is that uh, as uh, liquid security markets developed and dispersed ownership uh, became prevalent, a new political constituency basically 
developed of the securities, securities market, what you see. Both the federal securities law passed in the 1930s in the US and the company's act amendments adopted in the late 1940s in the UK were a response to this demand. So again, uh, what do we see? That across the board, uh, different stock markets uh, were gaining prominence and uh, these liquid securities markets basically uh, started dictating uh, the rules and regulations uh, of corporate governance on a national and also on a global level. And we again see uh, that the different uh, federal security laws of the 1930s in America and of the 1940s in the UK uh, were a response uh, to these changing uh, factors and also uh, the changing uh, environment within uh, the corporate world leading to uh, more acceptable best practice based uh, corporate governance on a global and on a national level. Thank you so much.